Hello and welcome to our next episode of Sanctuary. This video series in which we are touring these beautiful homes that we have built for our blessed Lord. Today we're in a little bit of a jewel I would call of a part of our San Antonio here on the deep southeast side of San Antonio. We are at the shrine of Our Lady of Sestahova here off of Beethoven Street. And I wanted to highlight this, not so much because of the church or anything like that, but because of how beautiful of a location we are in. It is a beautiful spot just to simply come out of everything to come to sit and pray. So the original shrine which stands behind me for Our Lady of Sestahova was founded in 1966 by Father Peter Coulter. He came in, wanted to build a bit of a devotion to Our Lady of Sestahova, which is patronage of Polish Americans and Poland in general. And then in 1969, they invited the Seraphic Sisters of Our Lady of Sorrows, a branch of the Franciscan Order out of Poland, to come and help take care of the shrine and also take care of the people in the area. These sisters are devoted to many things in regards to taking care of the neglected and those that are on the margins of society. In Poland, their focus was orphanages and mental hospitals and different things. Here in the United States, in San Antonio, they run a couple of different nursing homes. One here in San Antonio and the other in Kennedy, Texas. But this convent, this entire grounds that will give you a chance to see and explore a little bit in video is now a, just a beautiful place simply to come out of our society, out of the world. We are right next to Rigsby Road where it's a little, you can maybe hear a little bit of noise, but it's a beautiful grounds that I think is be a good thing for those looking to get away for a day, get out of everything else. This is a beautiful place to come. So we're gonna be touring a couple of different things. They have the shrine for Our Lady of Sestahova up here behind me. They have a small chapel which still operates and still has daily mass even in COVID times right now at 9 a.m. And then we have a convent where the sisters are living at here on the grounds. So at this time, let us go inside and let us see this beautiful shrine to Our Lady of Sestahova. So we are now inside the main shrine portion for Our Lady of Sestahova here off of Beethoven Street. Behind me you have the image of Our Lady of Sestahova, a reprint of course of the main image that is in Poland at this time. You will also normally hear her referred to as the Black Madonna. This is partially because the image over time there was a lot of incense was burned in front of the image and over time the soot from those different things slowly transformed the image to a lot darker than it may have been when it was originally painted. The original painting was painted on what was to be figured to be a tabletop and was actually considered to be painted by one of the apostles. This image is now, now located in Poland in, what, in a monastery called Jasna Gora, which is the now main home for this devotion in Poland. On the Feast of the Assumption, thousands upon thousands travel and do a pilgrimage from all orders of, of Poland. They come to this monastery to be in the presence of this beautiful image. There is much lore and there's a lot of stories about this image. And I would encourage you to go out and do some reading and research because I don't want to try to cover all the different stories that are entailed in this particular image. A couple of the ones that have always been close for me that I have always heard about is at one point this image was being transferred from one location to another to be able to make it a little more protected, a little more safe. And as it was traveling down the road, they reached the spot of the monastery at what is now called Yasna Gora. And supposedly the mules that were pulling the wagon stopped and they refused to go any further. And so what ended up happening was they decided this must be where the Blessed Mother has decided her image needs to reside. The other story, if you look really closely, and I'll have the camera kind of zoom in off of me to look a little bit closer on the image. If you look upon the face of the Blessed Mother on her right cheek, there are two marks that are on the cheek. These marks are not blemishes or a mistake of a pin. In the original image in Poland at one point, 
invaders or vandals had broken into the monastery and they were looting and trying to get a hold of many different things. And so the wombs come from the image is gilded. It has some gold and different things on it. Maybe we'll try to get a picture of the original image that we can put in this video for everyone to see what it looks like. And so one of the vandals decided he was going to cut the gold off the image because it was too large to carry off. And so he slashed at the face of the Blessed Mother. And I have not been able to see it in the booklets. I've always heard this part of the story that the vandal struck it twice. And before he could strike the Blessed Mother a third time, supposedly he fell over dead. And then in the process of trying to restore and cover up the blemishes, no matter how many times they tried to cover, supposedly the wounds on the face always return. It is a beautiful image. It is a beautiful history and a beautiful testimony for the Polish people and their devotion to the Blessed Mother. This image was, is thought to have been found out in the Holy Land by St. Helena whenever she was going through and finding all of these beautiful articles of our faith. You may remember St. Helena is the one that discovered the original true cross, the new resting, where it was at. The locations of many of the places such as the home in Bethlehem. So this image was one of the things that supposedly St. Helena discovered during her time in the Holy Land. So while we are here, we look at this beautiful image, this little shrine that we are in. The rest of the shrine behind me is not so much a place to come and pray. This front area is the prayer location. The rest behind me is a religious article store. You're able to come to buy little memorabilia and different little things for your family, your faith get holy water, stuff like that. But this space right here is the original shrine for Our Lady of Sestahova here in San Antonio. As you journey a little bit farther into the shrine, Usually this is mostly a visitor center, but I did want to highlight one beautiful aspect of this shrine is that they have an extremely large collection of relics of the saints that are on display for you to be able to venerate when you come by. They have all different sizes of reliquaries and relics of all different saints. And so I encourage you, if you do come, spend a little time with these saints and encounter the beauty of our church and our brothers and sisters who have earned their heavenly reward. We are now in front of one of the newer structures here at the Shrine of Our Lady of Sestahova off of Beethoven. This building was built in 1997. It is the shrine dedicated to the divine mercy. The sisters were the sisters were inspired by the story and the example of Sister Faustina. And so they began this divine mercy chapel that was built, like I said, in 1997. It is also the location of one of the larger celebrations for divine mercy every year throughout San Antonio. They do an extremely large celebration for the Divine Mercy here at this location off of Beethoven. So I do encourage you, remember, Divine Mercy Sunday always falls the Sunday directly after Easter to potentially be able to come and join the sisters for this great devotion here. Join the sisters. Here we are inside this chapel for the Divine, Divine Mercy here at this, the Shrine for Our Lady of Sestahola here off of Beethoven. It's a very, very simple chapel, but a very beautiful one as well. It still has the image of Our Lady of Sestahova, a statue of Pope St. John Paul II. 
as well as an image of the divine mercy as well. Just a very simple but very pretty church. I do want to remind everyone, this is the location where you would be coming if you wanted to join them for Mass. They are still doing daily Mass here at 9 a.m. each day. And so we do invite you, if you want to come, to come and join us for Mass here with the sisters and with the community that comes for Mass here. Here behind me, you also get a chance to see the front entrance to the convent for the Seraphic Sisters of Our Lady of Sorrows that help take care of all of this beautiful grounds and the location we are at. At the beginning, you may remember, we talked a little bit about they were invited in to take care of this particular shrine and the beautiful grounds here. Originally, it started with two, and then they slowly grew to four, and they do have a few other sisters. There are about four that live here at the convent. And then there are others that live at the Rutherford Nursing Home in Kennedy, Texas. For myself, this convent is a beautiful location. If you are looking for a place to do, for instance, a small retreat or a silent retreat here in the Archdiocese, the sisters are a great location to consider. I think they are able to host up to about 12 to 14 people. And it does give a beautiful location. I can also say the sisters are very good cooks. And you'll get a great meal provided with your retreat. So I invite you, come on out, visit all this beautiful grounds, the grotto, the chapel, visit the sisters, get a chance to meet them and see who they are. It is a beautiful location to come and just get out of your house, even for just a few hours, to spend some time out in prayer and out in nature. I think they are able to hold. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. everyone this is father scott janicek if you have been enjoying these videos for our sanctuary series i encourage you to go out into youtube look up to today's catholics uh, youtube channel and subscribe to the channel it'll allow you to be alerted whenever a new episode posts or whenever today's catholic posts anything i think could be a very much of an interest to you so i encourage you go on youtube subscribe to the channel It'll let you know when our next episode will be upcoming. Today's Catholic newspaper is for today's Catholic. 
The official publication of the Archdiocese of San Antonio is created right here for you. For only $16 a year, you can keep up with current events that impact our Catholic community. Today's Catholic newspaper will keep you informed and inspired. Subscribe today online at satodayscatholic.org or give us a call at 210-734-1610.